From the front range of the Rocky Mountains in beautiful Colorado, it is Wednesday, October 7th, 2020, and this is Truly News. I am your host, Jason Van Sickle. I hope that your week is going well and that your day has started off great. As you start this new day, remember that you have the power to choose your mindset and how you view the world. And the thought that I'd like to share with you today is that anger and hatred are self-destructive emotions that can infect our thoughts. But the cure is found through compassion and a search for understanding. So, that being said, let's start this day by learning more about the world around us through a positive and objective review of the news. As always, we start with a look at the top headlines from across the country. From the New York Times, Trump abruptly ends aid talks as virus upends top ranks of the government. After the Federal Reserve Chairman urged stronger stimulus measures, President Trump instead said he would end talks on any new relief bills until after the election. Those comments sent the stock market sliding with the Dow Jones ending the day almost 1.5% down. In multiple tweets later that night, Trump then seemed to reverse his position calling on Pelosi to move forward a new stimulus check deal to send to him for his approval. Meanwhile, the outbreak in the Capitol kept growing with senior White House aide Stephen Miller testing positive and most of the Joint Chiefs of Staff in quarantine. Since Trump tested positive, over a dozen people that came in contact with him have now tested positive. From the Washington Post, Supreme Court hears case of Muslims who say they were targeted for not becoming informants. Three Muslim men who said they were placed for years on the no-fly list because they refused to become FBI informants, told the Supreme Court on Tuesday that they should be able to sue the agents for targeting them because of their religion. The three men sued under the Religious Freedoms Restoration Act, which forbids the federal government from placing a substantial burden on religious exercise unless it has a compelling reason in the national interest that will impact those religious freedoms in the least restrictive way. The question before the court was whether the Religious Freedom Restoration Act authorizes monetary damages against the individual FBI agents. The law does not expressly say yes or no. From the Wall Street Journal, IRS to be investigated over use of cell phone location data. The Inspector General who oversees the Internal Revenue Service said in a letter to Capitol Hill on Tuesday he was examining the agency's use of software that allows the warrantless surveillance of mobile phones. From the Los Angeles Times, Biden says cancel next debate if Trump remains sick with COVID-19. Trump's bout of COVID-19 casts doubts on whether he can debate Biden next week in Miami. Medical experts say Trump might still be contagious. The debate is scheduled for Thursday the 15th. And from USA Today, five things you should know this Wednesday. Number one, the vice presidential debate between Mike Pence and Kamala Harris is tonight from 9 to 10.30 p.m. Eastern Time and will air on multiple news stations. Number two, Trump will likely respond to Biden's assertion that their debate should be canceled if Trump remains sick with COVID. Number three, Delta is now a Category 3 hurricane, which puts it in a classification as a major hurricane with winds up to 145 miles per hour. Though forecasters are unsure exactly where or when it will hit the United States, areas of the Gulf Coast from Louisiana and Florida could see dangerous conditions starting on Thursday night. Number four, Major League Baseball playoffs move ahead with a packed schedule that includes four games today. And number five in the five things you should know this Wednesday from USA Today, the rollout of the 2020 Nobel Prizes continues today with the announcement of the prize in chemistry. On Tuesday, three scientists won the Nobel Prize in physics for establishing the reality of black holes. And on Monday, the Nobel Prize in Medicine was awarded to three scientists for discovering the hepatitis C virus, which for years had been spreading through donated blood and causing serious liver damage in those infected. Finally, in our look at the top headlines, 
Here are the stories that are crossing the wire at Reuters News. President Trump remains under quarantine in the White House and restricted from travel. Also, Dr. Fauci says White House COVID-19 infections could have been prevented by following safety protocols. And U.S. asks top court to reinstate Boston Marathon Bomber's death penalty sentence, which was overturned by an appeals court. Yesterday also saw the passing away of two music legends. Eddie Van Halen died at age 65 after a battle with cancer. And singer Johnny Nash, best known for his 1970s reggae hit, I Can See Clearly Now, died at age of 80 from natural causes. Finally... In our headlines from Reuters, the U.S. Food and Drug Administration told coronavirus vaccine developers on Tuesday it wants at least two months of safety data before authorizing emergency use, a requirement that would likely push any U.S. vaccine availability past the November 3rd election. And those are your top headlines for today. To put us in a better mood after those headlines, we now present our top five joke countdown. As usual, bringing us the countdown is my friend Billy Cunningham. Billy is a comedian who goes by the stage name Potbelly. And now I turn things over to Billy. Thank you, Jason. Our jokes today are based on jokes from Reader's Digest at rd.com. Now I can't promise funny, but like Mama told me before I went on stage at the Rudy Tooty Refried Bean Shack and Comedy Club. She said, Billy, don't stink up the place. <laughs> well, I won't tell you the rest of that story. But anyway, remembering Mama's encouraging words, I bring you the top five countdown. And our category today is marriage jokes. <laughs> oh boy, here we go. Our number five joke in today's countdown. My friend told me that he and his wife were sitting together the other night and she turned to him and asked, Do you ever think about having more kids? What? He replied, We already got four. (laughs) Yeah, but she said, But I miss the pitter-patter of sound of little feet running around the house. Well, my friend said as he turned and looked at her lovingly, If it's that important to you, then we'll get a dog. They're cheaper and have more feet. (laughs) Oh, yeah. (laughs) He's a funny guy. Uh, We go fishing. He does stuff with fish. Never mind. Never mind. Number four. I got home a little late the other night from work, and my wife said, Do you want dinner? I replied, Sure. What are my choices? She answered, Yes or no. <laughs> That's what she usually said. <laughs> oh, number three. I was sitting in the living room the other day when I heard my daughter talking to my wife in the kitchen. Mama, she said, what's the difference between love and marriage? Well, honey, my wife answered, love is blind and marriage is an eye opener. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> it kind of hurt. Jeez, <laughs> oh, maybe I start picking up my underwear off the floor or something. Gosh, <laughs> number two, my friend and his wife decided to go out to a fine restaurant one night. When their food came, my friend said, "Our food has arrived. Let's eat." His wife reminded him, "Hey, honey, you always say your prayers at home before you eat your dinner." My friend replied, yes, that's at home. Here, the chef knows how to cook. (laughs) That wasn't nice, but it was funny. (laughs) He probably slept on the couch that night. (laughs) And, And your number one joke for the day. A man goes to the doctor and says, I'm really concerned about my wife. It's hard to get her to respond sometimes. She never seems to hear me. Okay, the doctor said, 
here's what you do. First, you find out how bad it is. Go home, stand behind her, and see how close you need to be for her to hear what you're saying. Okay, Doc, he said, and headed home. When he got there, his wife was working in the kitchen, so he maneuvered himself around her, standing about ten feet behind, and he said, Honey, what's for dinner? And she didn't respond. So he moved about five feet closer, and he repeated, Honey, what's for dinner? And nothing. So he gets right up behind her and repeats, Honey, what's for dinner? At that point, she spun around and said, For the third time, I said pork chops. (laughs) He's the one that couldn't hear. (laughs) Oh, yeah. Oh, well, you know, those are our jokes for today. I'm glad we had a little time together this morning, and I hope you have a great rest of your day. Remember, be kind to others, be good to yourself, and keep on smiling. This is Billy Potbelly Cunningham signing off. Over and out. There you have it, folks. Billy and his top five countdown. Thanks, Billy. And now we return to the news. In today's science and technology headlines, from CNET, SpaceX wins contract to build missile tracking satellites for U.S. military. SpaceX, the private space company founded by Elon Musk, just won a $149 million contract to build four satellites that can track missiles from space. The company will be required to deliver the satellites by September 2022. From Space.com, NASA is testing the first of its new moonwalking spacesuits. NASA officials have announced a plan to return astronauts to the surface of the moon before the end of 2024. And from CNET, Apple has finally set the date for its latest iPhone debut. The iPhone maker's biggest event of the year will be October 13th when it is expected to finally debut its 5G iPhone 12. And those are your science and technology headlines for today. In health news, from Healthline.com, how to tell if the air is safe enough to exercise outside. Wildfires have left millions of Americans across the country affected by poor air quality. Smoke and other particles from fires can hang in the air and when inhaled travel deep into the lungs. To figure out when it is safe to go outside, people should check their local air quality index levels, a measure that tells us what the current nearby air quality is like. The index scale ranges from 0 to 500 and includes different tiers associated with various health risks for different groups of people. A chart of risk levels can be found by doing a Google search using the term Air Quality Index Risk Levels. Also from Healthline, What to know about fruit recall linked to listeria. Fruit sold at Walmart is being voluntarily recalled over concerns it may be contaminated with listeria. Listeria was detected on equipment used in an area near where these products are packed at Country Fresh, the company that produces fruit sold at Walmart. The bacteria can cause serious infections in at-risk groups, including pregnant women, children, and older adults. And from MSN.com, CDC updates guidelines again to note risk of airborne transmission. It now says that coronavirus can infect people more than six feet apart. And that is your health news for today. Now, we take another break from the headlines for today's Words of Wisdom. To present this segment is Dr. Albert Feinstein, one of my philosophy professors from college. And here is Dr. Feinstein. Thank you, Mr. Van Sickle. Hello, and welcome to today's Words of Wisdom. Today's Words of Wisdom are from the 15th century Italian sculptor, painter, architect, and poet, Mr. Michelangelo. It is he who said, The greater danger for most of us lies not in setting our aim too high, 
in falling short, but in setting our aim too low and achieving our mark. This statement is a reminder of the incredible human spirit. Those who achieve greatness are often those who simply dare to dream. Now, we may not all go on to become accomplished such as Michelangelo, but we should still think about his words. Each of us is filled with such great potential. Believe in that potential. Believe in yourself and dare to dream. If you aim high but fall short, you will still reach great heights. And those are your words of wisdom for today. Back to you, Jason. Thank you, Dr. Feinstein, for those wise words of wisdom. We now return to our review of today's news. In entertainment news, we start with new movies. And today's movie is Then Came You, starring Kathy Lee Gifford, Craig Ferguson, and Elizabeth Hurley. This movie is about a lonely widow who plans a trip around the world with her husband's ashes to visit the places they loved in the movies. The first stop in the journey changes her life forever. Then Came You is now available to rent on YouTube. Moving on, we look at newly released shows, and today's show is Emily in Paris. This comedy drama series is about a girl from the Midwest who is hired to provide an American perspective at a marketing firm in Paris. Emily in Paris is now showing on Netflix. Finally, in our entertainment news, we take a look at newly published books. And our book for today is Next to Last Stand by Craig Johnson, which is presently number four on the New York Times fiction bestseller list. Here is a summary from Amazon.com. One of the most viewed paintings in American history, Custard's Last Fight, copied and distributed by Anheuser-Busch at a rate of over 2 million copies a year, was destroyed in a fire at the 7th Cavalry Headquarters in Fort Bliss, Texas in 1946. Or was it? When Charlie Lee Stillwater dies of an apparent heart attack at the Wyoming Home for Soldiers and Sailors, Walt Longmire is called in to try to make sense of a piece of a painting and a shoebox containing a million dollars sending the good sheriff on the trail of a dangerous art heist. Next to Last Stand is now available in print at your local bookstore and it is also available in print, Kindle, and audiobook formats on Amazon. And that concludes our entertainment news for the day. As always, we end our broadcast with a look at what we call happy news, and here is your happy news story for the day. From the Black Hills Pioneer in Black Hills, South Dakota, a story titled, United Way Month of Caring Leaves Lasting Impact. The United Way Month of Caring was a great success in Black Hills, South Dakota. Like every community within United Way, September was the month of caring, where people help raise money for the United Way and volunteers go out into the community to do acts of kindness. This year's event was a concern for most United Way organizers who did not know what to expect given COVID. However, like many branches, the United Way of the Black Hills was pleasantly surprised by this month's outcome. This year, the organization had over 800 individuals show up to help with 50 different projects across multiple Black Hills communities. Examples of projects included helping build and repair playground equipment, cleaning up public areas, and school children who wrote caring letters to nursing home residents and personnel. Many volunteers also fanned out across communities to volunteer at nonprofits who have struggled during COVID, especially those organizations that have struggled to keep up with an increasing need for their services. Organizations like the Salvation Army and Meals on Wheels saw many volunteers showing up and were grateful for the help. In addition to the massive volunteer effort that the United Way coordinated in September, it also had its annual fundraiser. That money goes to many great programs within the community. For example, last year the United Way of Black Hills gave over 66,000 books to children and provided over 67,000 individuals with access to prescription vouchers, 
mental health services, and food. All across the United States, the United Way is a great example of an organization that still sees the power of people coming together within communities to help each other. And that is your news for October 7th, 2020. Have a great day.